Okay. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. What are we doing today? Fractions. Who loves fractions? No. Oh, actually, quite a few. Who does not love fractions? Who doesn't care about them? Okay. Who's neutral? Okay, good. All right, good to see there are some people who love fractions. Why do we need fractions? Are they important? If people don't like them, why do we still have them? Yes? No, but where would you use this in your real life? Like, do we need fractions? To evenly divide something. Yeah, that's a great idea. To evenly divide something. You might not always end up getting one thing each, you know. Let's say you've got a bag of lollies. How are you going to divide if it's, you know, it's an odd number? How are you going to divide it between two people? So we need to know there are numbers other than just whole numbers. One, two, three, right? What else? Where, where else would you need fractions? To show percentages of an amount. Yeah, again, percentages of an amount might not always be a whole number. What's 50% of 100? 50. What's 50% of uh, 25? 2. 25. 12.5. Or 12 and a half, right? So it's not always a whole number. Does everything in nature exist in whole numbers? 1, 2, 3? No. Can we go halves? Can we go thirds? So we do have some concept of fractions, don't we? Alright, so now I'm going to ask you a very important question. When I say the word fractions, what food comes to mind? Pizza. 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 Did you all think of pizza? No. No. Okay, there are some other answers. I've never had other answers. Cake. Yeah, cake. Cake, yes. Mars bars. Mars bars. Okay, that's an interesting one. I've never heard that one before. Pie. Pies. Garbage trucks. Garbage trucks. Is that food? No, they're not food, but you can evenly distribute garbage from a garbage truck. What? So, yeah, that's not an example I'd think of, but yeah, thank you. Okay, well, I think, I think of... Um, food, I said food. Let's see here. Okay, you can go to someone else. Okay, something. awesome. Soda. Soda, yes. Like chocolate bar. Chocolate bar? Yeah. So am I... Yes. Donuts. Donuts? Mangoes. Mangoes. Okay, so I'm actually pleased that we are not always just thinking about pizza because I think pizza is the one you pretty much learn at primary school. Yes? And uh, pies, I heard pies, I had cakes. So let's actually start with pizzas or a pie. Something round. Unfortunately, curries uh, can't be used for fractions, otherwise I wouldn't like to. I love curries. Oh, yeah. I love curries. Maybe the reality I can curry with Yeah, you drive a curry. All right. Now, so, what do fractions represent? Can someone put this in a line for me? Fractions represent parts of a whole. Parts of a whole, that's a learned definition. We hear that all the time. What does that mean? That's correct, yes. That a whole number has been divided evenly into separate parts. Exactly, so a number, a whole number, has been divided into parts, right? So are fractions always less than one because we're dividing a whole into parts? Think about this one. No. Are fractions always less than one? No. Because when we use the definition parts of a whole, the misconception students, eyes on the board, stop fidgeting, please, sitting properly. When people use that definition, that's the problem I have with that definition, parts of a whole. So what students think is that there's one thing and you're dividing it into parts. So you can't have more than one. Is that right? That's wrong. So we can have fractions that represent more than a whole. And I will use a pizza as an example, and then we'll move on to other shapes like rectangles. Is that clear? Yeah. Unfortunately, in high school, we don't cook pizzas to learn fractions. I'm sure you, most of you would have done that in primary school, so we're just going to pretend we've got pizzas. Okay. So fractions, parts of a whole, we said, however, can be more than one as well. Right? So there are two parts of a fraction. Let's say I've written one number over the other number. There is a special name given to the top number. What's that called? Numerator, is that correct? Yes. You sure? Yes. Is the top one called the numerator? Yes. Yes, it is correct. Why are you panicking? It is. Okay. Then, what is the, the middle line called? All right, the hands went down now. Uh, oh. Oh. No. No. The half court line. <laughs> the vincular. Well done. Did anyone else know it? No. Well, you did. Well done. We say that. Calm down. Calm down. Don't get too excited. 
So this is called the vinculum, and most of you, I actually had my whole high school uh, um, education, I had my uni education without actually knowing what that line was called, and I'm a maths teacher. I found that about, uh, I found about the vinculum when I was uh, doing my debate, when I was training to be a teacher, so now I know. So I'm not surprised most of you don't know what that line is called. Yes, the bottom one is the denominator. Now, so the vinculum is a very important line. That's how we differentiate between the top and the bottom, right? Yep. We rarely use that line. We just say one over two or a half. So that's why it's not surprising that most of us don't even know what that line is called. But it's good to know. Now, the bottom part is very important. Why? If I cooked a pizza, how many students are in this class? 28, 28 right? The number of pieces I cut my pizza into actually decides what the bottom number is. Will I cut my pizza into 28 pieces? Yes. No, it'll be, it'll, be, yes. it'll be useless. We won't even be full, right? So we're going to buy just one pizza for this class? No, no more than yes. that, right? 32. What do you think is an appropriate amount? So let's say we've got a family, not a family, like a large size pizza. What would be, if you can only have one piece each, what would be an appropriate number of pieces for me to cut that into? All the pizzas into what number of pieces? So you can. So if I cut one pizza into 14 pieces, and you can only have one, would that be enough for you if I somehow do that? Will that be enough for you? No. So what would you... I need the duster. Yes. Eight. Eight, so again, you just want to have one out of eight. I'm, I'm happy with maths budget. There's a lot of money in the maths budget. I'm happy to buy more pizzas. Uh, quarters? A quarters. I think I'm happy with a quarter. So if I give you all a quarter of a large pizza for morning tea, would that fill you up? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Now, you're going to buy 56 pizzas. <laughs> so let's say I got a number of pizzas. And the first pizza I cut into quarters this way. The second pizza, I cut into quarters this way. Now, you get this pizza, so the first four students get a part each. The next four get a part each. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. Do you still like me as your teacher? No. No, no yes. wonder. Now, what if I actually now do something mean? Because you didn't do your maths homework. And those who didn't do their maths homework get these two pieces. And those who did got these two pieces. Do you like me at all, the ones who got no. these two? No. Yes. 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 Are we taking yes. pizza? Yes. Yes. So, is this a, so if someone, let's say student one got this, did he get a quarter of the pizza? Yes. yes. If student two got this, did he get a quarter of the no. pizza? No. no. So when you are dividing a whole into different parts, what is the most important thing about those parts? Raise hands, please. They're even. They are even. What does that mean? Use proper terminology. They're all equivalent. E not even equivalent? Equal. Equal. Those parts are equal. Is that clear? Yes. So when you are dividing parts of a whole, the number of parts, whatever parts you're dividing, they must be the same size. Is that clear? Yes. We can clearly see, otherwise this is not the same as this, is it? We can't say this is a quarter of a pizza, is it? No, because the parts are not equal. So are we all happy with that? Yes. So the number of parts must be equal. equal, otherwise you'll hate the person who cut your pizza, didn't you? Don't yeah. you? Yes. Now, so what does this bottom number represent? The number of equal parts. So these two are good for nothing. Now, is this one properly cut? Yes. So, how many equal parts have you divided the whole pizza into? Four. Four. So, the bottom number will be four. So, the number that is called the denominator that's below the vinculum is the number of equal parts your whole has been divided into. Do we understand the denominator now? Yes. Any questions? No. So, how many equal parts have I divided this pizza into? Four. So what would be my denominator? Four. Are the parts equal? Roughly. Yes. Question. What if the parts aren't equal? Then we can't write it as a fraction. Then it's, we can't say it's that 
it, they have to be equal for us to represent it as a fraction. Otherwise, we'll have to figure another way. Okay? Now, so if one student ate one out of those parts, what fraction of a pizza that student ate? One out of four equal parts. 